Bobby, would you call the roll, please? Joanne Murphy Spice is excused. Heidi Basford Kirkhoff is excused. Julie Kiefer. Here. Julie Davids. Here. Bryn Seaman. Here. Patricia Urovitz. Here. Julie Maslowski. Here. Judy Ritchie. Here. Mike Ford. Here. Cynthia Thorpe. Here. Allie Ford. Here. Jean Wallerman. Here. Okay, thank you. Oh. You have been introduced to Allie. Excuse me. Oh, we're going to. Okay, good. Uh, one of the things that I neglected to do last month was actually introduce Allie just a little bit <laughs> and um, maybe share a little bit now or would you rather do it more at the end of the meeting? Sure, no, I can share a little bit. My name's Allie Ford. Um, I'm a nurse practitioner with Aurora Healthcare. I work... Excuse um, me, can you speak a little louder and a little slower? Sure, sorry. My name's Allie Ford. I'm a nurse practitioner with Aurora Healthcare, um, and I work, part of my job there is to work in the nursing homes and round on folks there, so I have some experience with um, older members of our community that way, and I also have a background as a hospice nurse, um, which has given me some insight into um, our older population as well. So I'm looking forward to being on the committee and um, being able to help in any way I can. Okay, thank you. Um, and I, I will, I neglected this, I will ask everybody to speak a little slower and a little louder. Um, our speaker today does have a hearing impairment, and so if we show him a little extra consideration, that would be very helpful. Uh, okay, moving on, citizen statements, did we have any? None. Approval of the minutes. Hmm? Oh, sorry, yeah. <laughs> Got back to um, I skipped ahead. Uh, we need to have approval of the March uh, minutes. Everybody got a copy? Are there any additions or corrections? Then I'll take a motion to approve. So moved. Anyone second? Second. Okay. The two Julies. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Citizen statements. You said you had none? None. Mm -hmm. Any public comment on agenda items? None. Okay. So then we'll move on to our presentation, and our speaker for today is someone that is known and has been very visible in the community for a long time, and that is Rob Patterson. He is um, on the uh, Specialized Transportation Committee at the ADRC. He is on the Housing Authority Committee, and he is definitely a community advocate for accessibility, Rob Patterson. Thank you, Rob. Okay, thank you, Judy. Um, hopefully I'm doing this right. Uh, this is the first time I've ever spoken into one of these. <laughs> one of these. Um, I'm going to start with uh, some of my, uh, my background. I... Uh, uh, Brian Nagler was here at the last meeting, and he gave you a brief overview of the ADRC, and he talked about uh, he talked about basically family care and IRS, um, in the way it affect in the way it affects me personally is I'm in family care. Uh, Family care was, came along, and Iris came along in 2010. Um, it started with um, it started with three counties, and uh, Fond du Lac was a pilot county in the state. It was, there was one of it was one of five, and. Uh, it goes back to, I think, about mm, roughly uh, uh, the late 1990s. Uh, I'm not sure about the year. There was there's so much that I... Uh, and uh, I only have 15 minutes, so I'm going to try to move along. And uh, anyway... Uh, Winnebago and Manitowoc County 
joined with Fond du Lac County, and Fond du Lac County had built up enough reserves, and uh, I'm sure Ron can correct me if I'm wrong. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> and um, uh, they had enough money to cover both of, of uh, the two counties, Manitowoc and uh, Winnebago. And um, from 2004 to 2010, uh, it was the process of, um, it was, it came kind of slowly and then it picked up speed. And uh, I was part of the Human Services Board starting in 2004. I had got appointed as a, as a citizen member, and uh, so that that's how I got started. Uh, I uh, let's see where do I want to start. Um, I got appointed, and um, then going on, I. Re mm, Uh, going on, I basically, uh, I would basically, uh, we were sold on those programs, and uh, and when the ADRC came into existence in uh, the year of 2010, um, we had to pick either program. Um, first of all, you have to have a functional screen uh, to see if you're eligible for services. And uh, 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 they have uh, they have just they have one position for that, and they come out to they come out to your, where you live. And uh, and they ask you all kinds of questions. Um, some of them are well. How do I put it? Uh, well, to put it bluntly, uh, some of them are rather, rather personal. Um, can you dress yourself? Can you bathe yourself? Things of that nature. Um, and. Uh, I didn't have any problem with those. Uh, I started, uh, I had uh, family care contracts with different agencies to provide the services for you, and uh, the services are tailored to your needs. Um, when I Started, I had a person who was really good, and I uh, had her for quite a while. Uh, she uh, did laundry for me. Uh, uh, oh, she did dishes, she did cleaning, and stuff like that. Uh, I took care of the bedding in the bedroom um, because I wanted. I wanted to do some stuff for myself uh, to show my own independence. Uh, it's a fine line between independence and dependence. And, uh, but I wanted to stay as independent as I could. Um, I was also, uh, in the early 2000s, well, in in 2010 and around that time, uh, I was finished. I was uh, I was working with uh, also the behavioral health. Uh, I've been uh, diagnosed with manic depression, and it came after my freshman year of college, 
when I was 20 years old. That was in 1983, and uh, so it was, it was, and I didn't make it back to where I wanted to. Uh, I did continue with college up here at the university, and uh, I did, I did, and I stayed up here, and uh, I, uh, I, I did lots of things, uh, lots of, after I left college and I didn't graduate, I did lots of odd jobs, and uh, that took care of the next couple of years. Um, over the years, I, I uh, had different hospitalizations. I had uh, four hospitalizations uh, over the next oh, 20 years. And um, it, it wasn't exactly how I had my life planned out. And uh, it was tough, but, uh, but I got through it and uh, kept going. And uh, with a lot of help along the way. Um, so that gives you a little background of how, of how I'm intertwined with the behavioral health and my, my own recovery from mental illness. And um, also, um, at the same time, uh, when I was about 28 years old, I was diagnosed with um, a cerebellar degeneration. It's, uh, uh, it's not, uh, it's not like it's not like multiple sclerosis or um, the other the other cerebral palsy or anything like that, um, but it was a it's a slow degenerative uh, condition uh, affect my balance, my vision, my hearing, uh, lots of things, and uh, so I had that to deal with too, <laughs> and. Uh, that's been a growing process. Um, I just turned 60, and uh, so it'll be 40 years since the mental illness, and then about 32 for uh, the neurological. And um, so it, it's been quite a ride, to say the least. Now, uh, getting back to transportation, I, uh, I wanted to talk about what I was most familiar with, and that is uh, the bus and the bus system. Um, I, I figured uh, there were at least two things that you need to, to have when you're on the bus. Um, you have to be able to strategize your time uh, because you, unfortunately, the buses used to have the time listed on the, the on the route, the route sign, and um, and they used to have it that way, and they don't now. So. Either one, you have to have a clock. Uh, otherwise, you have to calculate. Uh, most people have a cell phone now. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm kind of dragging on that, <laughs> dragging on the technology, but uh, I'm working on the iPad and things of that nature. And I've been going to the senior center uh, and getting lessons there for over a year now. And uh, so that kind of covered the strategy. And then uh, you have to be able to be mobile. You have to be able to, to, to move around. You have to be able to walk. Um, in 2000, I think it was 2015, 
to 2017, the, I was part of an advocacy group, and um, we, the, I believe, I was, I was the vice chair, and we had a, and the chairperson, uh, both of us, went to, uh, there was a two-year study uh, on transit, and uh, it had meetings all over the town, um, uh, such as the Housing Authority, uh, Court Tower, uh, oh, where else? Oh, at the hospitals, um, both the hospitals, and um, one of the things that they changed on the bus routes was they did not put the time time on the sign, as I said earlier. And what happened was that uh, I asked Jim, Jim Collins about that, and uh, and he said they they were getting so many calls because people would wait for the bus and the bus wouldn't show up at that right exact time. And the time on the bus sign for approximate time, because you have to consider traffic, uh, you have to consider emergencies, you have to consider all kinds of stuff. And uh, so that's why they didn't put the time on the signs. Um, uh, I'm going to jump around a little. Uh, the ADRC, our, our first chairperson was Donna Lory, uh, L-O-H-R-Y, and uh, she, myself, and Ginger Buke, Ginger, uh, I think you know, uh, Judy, and yes. uh, uh, so she she has a lot of fire, you know, and she she has CP, she has cerebral palsy, and um, one of the things we advocated for was that the bosses uh, extended the routes, which was fine, but they refused to go into any parking lot. Hence the mobility part, and uh, this is a struggle for some people. What we advocated for specifically was to get um, to get the the buses to go back into the hospitals because um, they would only, for instance, at um, uh, oh, I'm trying to think. The one by uh, uh, Aurora, that the one. They uh, would only stop. Uh, I think on the street, and if you stop on the street, one thing I one thing when I gave up when I had to stop driving because of my neural disability, I. Uh, I kind of forgot to name the street. I mean, I had knew where to go, but I couldn't tell you the street. Anyway, uh, they didn't go in, uh, you know, they, they just wanted to go on the outside. They had a bus stop right by a uh, festival, festival food, and and that's quite a distance uh, to uh, to go into the front door. You know, there's a there's a little roundabout, a little curvature, but the buses didn't want to go. And but we advocated for that, and we also advocated for the bus to go back into uh, affinity. And uh, 
and we spoke in front of the council, and uh, after that, um, after that, they were they were really aware of it, and uh, we made enough noise, I guess, and uh, so they went back in. You know, it was, it was nice to see. Um, the other thing that I could say briefly are uh, about the uh, the changes in the bus route. Uh, there's a change right now. In fact, it started on Monday with Route uh, 10, which is from Oscar to Nina. And basically, what happened is that the university pulled out its funding. And of course, of course with uh, COVID and uh, other, and with the increase and in, in everything, and everything had gone up, you know. And uh, so uh, it wasn't feasible. And uh, also I found out from uh, it, right now there's a partnership between uh, the city and the county. That would be uh, Mark Roloff mm -hmm. and John Damel. And um, basically th they're running a pilot program. That's what started. And the pilot program is the fastest way to Nina, uh, which would be um, Highway 41, and uh, and right down to the transit station, uh, and uh, and then from there, they you could catch the bus to wherever you wanted to go in Nina, or you could catch a bus uh, that goes. Um, you could catch a Manasha bus. Uh, that would take you through Manasha and uh, and then to Appleton and um, and that's what it was before it was uh, to get to the Fox Valley and from there you could go to all kinds of places um, so I I left out some specifics um, so but uh, and uh, so uh, I wanted to also briefly, uh, one other thing I should mention, it's kind of ironic because before uh, the, co the university was paying for, for any college students, and a lot of them I think had their own car or their or they get a ride from someone, and uh, and of course just uh, decrease the ridership, and uh, and the college students when the university the college students rode for free, um, so the the buses, uh, well the cabs are heavily subsidized. In my own case, um, I was able to, when I came back to Oshkosh in uh, 1996, in March, it was March 1st, and um, I, I kind of hesitant about taking the cab because I was so used to Nina. Nina only had two cabs. <laughs> it was an East cab and a West, it was East Nina and West Nina. And if you know anything about Oshkosh, they're, they're 10, you know, or they're nine, and then including uh, the one to Nina, 10. So it was quite a job to learn, to learn all this stuff. Um, I also, uh, I just wanted to say that uh, with the uh, the um, 
every quarter there's a meeting with the uh, the East Central uh, Wisconsin Regional Planning Commission. Um, that is a group that involved uh, 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 Jim Collins uh, from Transit. Um, it involved also Holly, Holly Keen, uh she she's a mobility 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 manager in um Appleton and she coordinates several different programs. Uh one of them called Catch a Ride, uh, another one uh, 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 a lot of the, uh, they're, they're uh, with, with cab and cabulance. Um, they're, the people can get different cards, uh, uh, different colored cards uh, for different prices, you know, and, um, and there are about probably, hmm, I'd say about nine of them that are all together. And uh, so I, I didn't bring that, but uh, so that gives you an idea of, of how detailed it gets. Uh, Bren, I, I told her I wasn't going to bring up her name, <laughs> but I have to tell you, uh, I had a chance to work with her, and I thought she was a, she was a neat person. And uh, one of the things she did, I believe, is a program supervisor after Mark Weisenthal retired. Uh, she, asked, she had asked me uh, about some of the difficulties and uh, using the bus and using transportation and all the kind of stuff. Because she was, uh, unfortunately, the learning curve is very steep. Uh, as you probably know from your own committee, <laughs> and uh, I'll probably learn as I go. You know, that, that's basically how I've learned and learn as I go. And, uh, but, uh, but uh, yeah, we, uh, at the time, uh, this was before, uh, way before COVID, and um, we, the East Central Wisconsin Regional Planning Commission meeting were in Menasha. And uh, so I would ride with Bren, you know, and we would, We'd have great conversation, and uh, you know, it's real nice. And uh, so there was uh, there was a lot to tell her about my own experiences, and I've shared a little more about my personal background. Uh, so I believe is my time just bought up. <laughs> It is. Yeah. Okay, and then I didn't know if anybody wanted to ask questions of what I said. Um, so, I, if you have any questions, um, you can tell me or uh, uh, let me know. I can give you my phone number. It's mm -hmm, that. Not during the public portion of the meeting, please. Pardon? Not during the public portion of the meeting, Oh, I'm please. sorry. I'm sorry. And, uh, well, I, I didn't realize that. <laughs> and uh, so I, I figure I'm a pretty open person, so you can ask me just about anything. <laughs> and uh, so. Did you take the new Route 10 yet? Have you taken it to? Well, Started on Monday, and that was yesterday. And unfortunately, I was, uh, I had a few things to take care of. So this is only the second day. It's 
started yesterday, and uh, it's a pilot program, and according to the write-up they posted at the transit station, in case you don't know where that is, that um, if you know where uh, the, grand, uh, the Grand is, and then uh, also by the by the by the open square uh, in Oshkosh here, and uh, and also by BMO Harris Bank, and the transit center is right there. They also one of the things they did I'll mention is that they increased the fares, and uh, I. If you want to know about that, I can go into that at another time. And uh, basically, uh, with the increase in fare, they were able to, uh, and the buses are heavily subsidized. If you were to take the bus without the fares they have, um, it would be about nine dollars, nine dollars a ride, and the population, myself included, uh, couldn't afford that. <laughs> couldn't afford that, and um, so uh, they built a. Uh, they have. Uh, they housed the buses um, on nine twenty six Dempsey Trail. Uh, and that it's uh, I think right across from a uh, jet stream car wash, and I think it's on Whistle, if I can have my street right. And uh, so I'll just that's about all. One of the things yeah. that I'd like to speak to with Rob. His sense of independence and wanting to be independent. Our church, we belong to the same church. He refuses to use the fund, special fund that is set up for transportation. He walks, not that it's that far, but in all kinds of weather. He walks to church to be there. And it's just amazing to watch him and to watch how he has maintained his independence for so many years so good job Rob I had a background as an athlete when I was younger uh, from 13 till about 28 and uh, I did I did a couple I did uh, I did swimming and bicycling and uh, running so you know he was I had that mentality and uh, in that uh, just go for it attitude, and um, so that that kind of helped. Uh, uh, yesterday, for example, I uh, I got off the bus on Main Street, and I had a mm, five five and a half block walk uh, to Walgreens. I had to go there and. I got off the bus, and guess what? The wheel came off my walker, <laughs> so I had to carry it. I, well, I decided to carry it. <laughs> and when I got to Walgreens, I, uh, I, I tried wheeling it, you know. It said, and I thought, well, gee, if I lean on this side, it'll work, you know. <laughs> but be very careful, because <laughs> you don't want to go down. I've gone down mm -hmm. so, on the occasion, but mm -hmm. are there came any right other back up. So, are there any other questions for Rob? If not, Rob, we'd like to move on with the rest of the meeting, but we'll make sure that you get home safely today. Mm -hmm. <laughs> ah, yes, yes, yes. Or, or a well, Judy, Judy set me up with the walker here, but I looked <laughs> like, ah, uh, well, it was about mm, two feet too short. <laughs> Uh, well, some of some of the people that have used it in the past are short, so <laughs> yeah, very very slowly. <laughs> and I even told Judy to uh, 
you know, she wanted to be up here because I was a few seconds, I was a few minutes late. <laughs> <laughs> okay, moving on. Old business. Is there any old business to discuss? New business? And moving forward, and Mike, I think you probably will understand the rationale that with our committees, we during new business we're not supposed to discuss anything that may include decisions or whatever so a recommendation that came out of a, a meeting that I was at last week is that uh, moving forward we'll drop the new business portion uh, so that um, anything that is new business will be publicly noticed first so do you want to explain it any further, or is that pretty much it? I think that's a good explanation. I do want to throw in, I wasn't planning on this, but April 12th, we have at UW Oshkosh a, um, one of our Wednesday events through the, the Whitburn Center um, for at noon <coughs> to 1, and our speaker is Ray Tefora, who was the legal counsel for the UW-Madison, uh, and the whole topic there is open meetings and open records laws yeah. and how to navigate it. Um, so if anyone is interested in learning more about that, uh, I encourage you to attend. Okay, hey, thank you. Hmm? When was that? April, um, 12th. April 12th at noon. And it's virtual, it's online. So All are welcome. Is it going to be recorded? So that It is going to be recorded, so I can send that around as well. Oh, yeah. That would be good, because some of us actually do have other meetings. <laughs> <laughs> what? Noon on Wednesday? <laughs> My life is full of meetings. <coughs> okay. Um, okay, under other business... Uh, we'll start with Jean. All right. Uh, coming up are the Friends of the Senior Center is offering a free shred event. So I'll pass around our newsletter. It is found on page 28. It's going to be held on May 20th. So the community is welcome to attend between 9 and 11 at the North parking lot at 234 North Campbell. Many things that you can shred, and there's listings on that flyer mm. of the things you cannot shred. So three ring binders, batteries, small e-waste items, garbage, plastic cups, paper plates, food wrappers, etc. You can, they will not accept. They will accept all paper, file folders, hanging folders, computer paper, notepads, and envelopes, and the staples, paper clips, and bowl clips do not they do not need to be removed so if you want to spread the word so it is open to the community again it's a drop-off you just uh, pull up they'll take the things right out of the trunk of your car and uh, spread everything up the other our food truck Friday event which is also sponsored by our <coughs> friends is happening in June and I will bring more information uh, in the uh, in, at the May meeting Julie Kiefer? Um, we're about halfway through the semester of learning and retirement, but um, they are going to be offering a membership special. That is a membership program. Membership typically runs during the school year, um, July 1 to June 30th. So right now they're running a membership special that if you join now, you get the whole next year um, included. So basically 15 months for the 12-month price. So if anybody has interest in that, you can contact me or... Um, on the UWO website, if you search learning and retirement, you will find it on their website. Okay, Mike? Yeah, well, the big one, vote today, obviously, if you haven't done that yet. Um, the second thing I wanted to bring up was the um, on April 10th, um, here at City Hall at 6 p.m., so room 404, room 406, we're having a public meeting regarding the uh, proposed development on Lake Butamore Drive. You may have read about that. I know it's been getting some attention. And um, that meeting will have the developer and city staff um, answering questions and talking about it. So if you are at all interested in that development, I encourage you to attend. Hey, Julie Maslowski. Hi. Um, so every month, Carmel organizes like a veterans coffee where we invite veterans to come in and um, have coffee, have some conversation, and maybe even some pastries. Um, each month we 
moved the location. So this month it's taking place at the residence of Oshkosh. Um, so any veterans are welcome to attend and come and meet other veterans. Um, so that was one thing. Um, and then on April 20th, we actually are starting Tai Chi at Carmel um, with Joanne Murphy Spice. So we're excited to have her come and join us and, and teach our residents the Tai Chi. So. Julie Davids? Sure. Um, April, I wanted to let everyone know that on April 18th, the Fox Valley Memory Project is having a fundraiser and get, kind of get together for um, all, the, uh, uh, f all the folks. And if you don't know what Fox Valley Memory Project is, it's an organization a support group for people with dementia and their caregivers. Um, so that is April 18th. I don't have the exact time but that is going to be at Waverly Beach. Okay, Bryn? There are so many good things going on. It makes me so happy to come to these meetings. I love seeing too in the Senior Center the talking about the companions, um, dog companions, canine companions. I recently read an article too that there's so much positivity that comes from those companions. They even have robot dogs now to help the family caregivers and give the care recipients um, some of that attention and the ability to have some compassion. Uh, this is a repeat. I'll share two things. The first thing is a repeat from last month. Um, Empowered Caregiver Community is two family caregivers that are based out of Madison but have a radio station here in Oshkosh and they're looking for free nominations of any caregivers that you might know, work with, or personally be aware of. Um, and they get a free gift box and an opportunity to chat on their podcast if they're interested or if they're not, they can also pass on that as well. Um, but it's a nice opportunity to recognize. I'll send the electronic information too to you, Bobby, as well, because I think I only have six copies. Same thing with this. Um, there is an opening for the State Agency Advisory Council. Um, it's specific to older adults in the aging population. Um, GUAR, the company I work for, is a, a contracted agency for the state, so I really can't do that. But many of you have a lot of insight, and there wouldn't be a conflict. So if you have a special desire to sit on their virtual meetings and be a part of their advisory council, um, I'll make sure, too, that that electronic application gets passed around, because I think there's some really good knowledge at this table and an opportunity to have an influence on a state level. That's all I have. Okay. And Heidi is not here to address scams. There was uh, a recent um, news uh, reporting, very long one, but it says um, if you wonder how they, uh, these scammers get your phone number for texting, and according to the um, call blocking app RoboKiller, and I've been hearing a lot of that lately. Scammers make hundreds of millions of scam calls using what they call a spray and pray method, blasting out robocalls to area codes with older populations, hoping someone answers. They'll use caller ID spoofing the um, local area or government agency. And I believe it was um, oh, one of the lo um, nearby counties that just had uh, quite a, an issue with that. So anyway, the, um, spread the word on that. Just don't pick up, don't answer, and just try to ignore it. Um, okay. Cynthia. Yes, um, I've had the opportunity to serve on a neighborhood association. I'm with Menominee South Neighborhood Association since we formed it, and I think we're coming up on 10 years now and one of the benefits of being part of a neighborhood association is being able to um, participate in various programs that are offered by our umbrella board which is the Oshkosh Healthy Neighborhoods Association and so this is the time of year one of our one of our very positive programs takes off and it's called the Good Neighborhood Grant. And I will have to say, part of our problems, we, we tend to put neighborhood in so many of our programs that people are always going, is that great neighborhood? Is it good neighborhood? Or, and it's confusing. But the good neighborhood, good neighborhood Grant has the purpose of enhancing your curb appeal 
from the front of your house and beautification. And it's open to anybody within one of our neighborhoods. And we're up to how many now? Julie is our, on the board, maybe 24? Or is it even more? 20, 23 or 40, yeah. So. Yeah, we really have a lot of <laughs> identified <laughs> neighborhoods. <laughs> and, the, and what it is is monetary grants to encourage people to beautify. So you can receive up to $750 towards putting something attractive in front, doing some landscaping. Maybe it's a door project. Maybe you need to fix and repair something that we see from the front. So it's as creative as you can be as well as what your needs are. And after you pay the first $250 on a project, you can receive up to $750. So let's talk about a $1,000 project. You can do it for $250. And what you'd need to do is to save and um, submit your receipts afterwards but you take before and after pictures which is so easy with everybody's phones nowadays application is easy and it starts april 15th and it runs through june 15th and you'll be hearing about it because i would um we always have to remind people people are think about it but are slow to do it so encourage people it's become much more popular than the first year we did it and we've increased it. Um, we get funding through the city. It's a partnership with the Oshkosh um, Foundation. And you can, you'll see signs. In fact, I think, I hope we get more signs this year. We ran out of signs. So when they, someone completed a project, there'll be a lawn sign that'll say Good Neighborhood Project so that it will alert people. And that's one of the best ways that other people learn about it when they talk to their neighbors. And I think it's important if you have a special friend in your neighborhood, who is of uh, over 50, which is starts the seniors center thing, but maybe we can help them think about maybe a project they need and we can reach out to them. So I would encourage people to participate if there's an Yeah, you do have to be in a recognized neighborhood yeah. association. So if you don't live in a recognized neighborhood association, it's a great opportunity to start one. <laughs> <laughs> great motivator. Next plug. <laughs> Are there any other things coming up with the Neighborhood Association? Well, you know, as long as you asked, I will say that Menominee South did, uh, a year ago, we had to apply for a, a opportunity through a proposal to get receive rock, rock the Block. And we're on the east side, Menominee South, so there's a lot of people that, um, that have a need f to par will be, I think we started with about 42. I don't know if we have that many houses that will be receiving, but in the month of May, Rock the Block is a collaboration with Habitat, the city, and the great neighborhood, um, the uh, Go HNI, so the Neighborhoods Association. And once again, it's beautification. It's kind of doing a facelift in your neighborhood. A facelift to people who have signed on, you didn't have to have any, any economic income requirements nor ability you know so if it's just something that needed to be done there are four days in may that rock the block will be happening it's tuesday thursday tuesday thursday on the 16th of may is the first one so if we can figure that out but in collaboration with rock the block we will be doing a dumpster day and that's what when i th heard of the shred event it's another opportunity for people in that area to clean up and get rid of some of the clutter. And when we talk about what will be acceptable, of course, you can't put certain things in a dumpsters. They will be monitored, but two weeks in a row, because it's Tuesday, Thursday, on the Thursdays, we will have dumpsters that are available for our neighborhood. And we will also be accepting what I would say, if you're not sure if it's if it's still usable, but you have to get rid of it and it's a hardship, you can't lift or move. If you notify and talk to somebody in the neighborhood, Habitat will be picking up. We will have a collaboration with whether it's St. Finney's or Goodwill, someone to help move this stuff that can be recycled as opposed to just throwing in a dump. So it'll be more of an effort to help people get rid of stuff that is often difficult to do if you can't lift, if you can't transport so I think that's a great opportunity and um, our neighborhood will start looking much nicer and we hope that by rock the block and inspiring the neighbors to when they see stuff going on they will oh I better look at my yard and see what's happening I think another piece that's really great is you probably heard a lot about the ash trees 
Mm. And it, just within the last five years, they've all sh become victim of uh, um, emerald ash borer. Well, in this case, as we were recruiting households, I was particularly looking for people that had large ash trees in the front of their household. Because one of the services that Rock the Block does do is it helps homeowners take down trees. And as you know, it's very expensive mm -hmm. to take down some of these trees. And we've, they've increased the budget because the need was identified in our neighborhood for Rock the Block. In the past, they had like $10,000 that they um, assigned to tree removal and tr shrubs. Because of the foundation and the city's dollars, it's up to 20000 and, and there will be tree removal going on at the same time. In fact, they started some of it already because uh, it's a good time to get a, a jump on it now. Lots of good things going on. Yeah. Again, you have to be in a recognized neighborhood association <laughs> <laughs> to be involved I will in. Say it and you will yeah, yeah. It, to be involved in neighbor in Rock the Block. So um, it's a great opportunity. Mm. And it's an incentive to have some of the other neighborhoods uh, organize a, a similar group. And pretty soon, if we could have the whole city covered that way. There you go. <laughs> hey, we can dream big. That's right. Mm -hmm. OK, Pat? Um, no, nothing new. Last month was um, National Gambling Screening Day, so we tried to uh, get information to the elderly, saying there's something out there if, if um, you know somebody who has a problem. So talked to a few people, so it was good. Okay, Joanne is not here. Uh, she will be doing uh, some of her classes at the Altrusa Conference the first weekend in May. She is definitely getting out in the community and really talking wellness, mm -hmm. balance, health, um, for good, healthy aging. So, okay, Allie, you want a little bit more about your goings on? <laughs> um, I actually don't have any updates today, but. Okay, and uh, State of the City, uh, that was a very good evening. Yes, it was. Uh, um, the uh, slide presentation, all of the, the speeches, the amazing things that are going on in the city. I mean, Mike? Yeah, I encourage people to watch it online. It's posted on there um, if you're interested. But yeah, it was a really nice nice update. And it was just nice to be back in, in person mm. and feel like we're getting out of the last three years of mm. virtual. There, there weren't as many of the boards <coughs> and commissions uh, there, but the Committee on Aging was, uh, sustain, sustainability. Um, and it's, it's worth going to and being able to actually speak with someone from some of these boards and commissions or the departments um, and just getting a good idea of what's going on. May I add that I attended That's and right. we saw you. And there were, I've, I've attended some in the past and I just wanna say that what I really felt this was the most upbeat and positive, I liked the tone of it so I would really encourage people to watch it because there was there's been a difference over the years and it, it was a great presentation by our city manager Mark did a great job on that and along with that we really have to do the kudos to Oshkosh Media who did all of the slide and video presentations and having drone views and all those things that we've not had in the past it just a very polished presentation um, so, again, um, and then I'm going to ask Ron to step up to the table and share the mic with Rob. A roll. I believe. Or he would have been under. Well, he is. He is part of my presentation. He's sharing it. Um, let's, Mike, let's start with you explaining the committee that is exploring the whether or what's going on with boards Yeah, the committee on committees. <laughs> 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 I'm thankfully yeah. not, not on. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so uh, Council Member uh, Miller and Councilwoman Erickson are, are chairing that committee, a subcommittee that will recommend uh, updates and changes to the board and commission structures 
to the whole council. And still waiting on when we're going to get those recommendations. But hopefully, um, it's, always, it's always nice to renew and see what, what committees are working, what committees need to make some changes or want to make some changes. And what was interesting, um, and my uh, meeting with them was last Friday. Julie was uh, out of town with learning and retirement. And so I asked uh, Ron as past vice chair to be a part of it because he has uh, part of the history. So um, we'll let Ron start with part of that discussion. Okay. Well, it was, it was uh, like an hour and 15 minutes, I think, we met with him. We were supposed uh, to be 45 minutes. Yeah, so so we really had a lot to say, and and uh, we were really well received. I think uh, it was a very very positive uh, experience uh, meeting with Mark, uh, Bill, and and Lindsay. Uh, a, a few of the things, and we probably won't cover everything that we covered in the 40, that hour and a quarter. But uh, we emphasized that <coughs> we would, as an advisory committee, we'd certainly like to hear more from council as well as staff in terms of uh, things they would like to have input on regarding senior services or services for older adults. Uh, that's one of our roles is to be advisory. So we need, in order to advise, we need to know what the needs are that at least are being identified by uh, counselors as well as uh, uh, staff, uh, city staff. So. Uh, we wanted to emphasize we're willing to play that role, but we need to know what's going on as well uh, from those committees as well as you know from our own committee here. Um, we focused on uh, the role of this committee uh, being education and advocacy in a big way. Uh, I think in recent years we've taken on more and more of that kind of, of uh, responsibility as a result of the last uh, strategic plan. and. Uh, that was very well received as well, and uh, we would certainly recommend that that role expand. Uh, the need for an updated strategic plan was another area that we talked about. The last one was done, I think, in 2017, and uh, uh, maybe you can talk more about that a little later if you want to. Um, talked about the size of the uh, Committee on Aging, you know, seeking a quorum is sometimes a challenge, although I don't think it's been a challenge very often of late. Uh, there was some thought of, well, maybe reducing the number from nine to seven, that would reduce the number in quorum and so forth. Uh, but um, I, th I think we kind of set that aside in the end. We, we felt that the size of the committee right now is very workable. Uh, when we were at 13, um, we had, a lot of challenges on maintaining a quorum. Um, so we felt reducing it would eliminate our ability to have work groups, um, even having people like Ron as ad hoc members. Um, so we really were saying this mm -hmm. is a good number. And then Along with that became the question of, okay, if we've got a speaker coming for our meeting, which we do most of the time, and what if we don't have a quorum? Do we just cancel the meeting? Or is there a possibility of doing just a speaker without any business meeting? We certainly recommended that, um, and I think it's going to get some some play with uh, the subcommittee in terms of their thinking that through. They they, they seem to be they receptive to considering that, oh. um, because as we take the role, you know, really expanding the role of the yeah. educational piece, informational piece, awareness piece, um, we can still do that without actually taking action. So that's, that's something that we're advocating for. I think that was, uh, those are the key points that I wanted to make sure we talked about. Um. Okay. Um, one of the things that was of our concern also was 
there have been rumblings in the past of doing away with this particular committee. And I think some of that goes back a number of years where it was the larger committee. We were having difficulty maintaining a quorum and we were not having the educational component as much. Um, one of the things that has really happened uh, since Jean came on board that we um, we have we've been having more speakers uh, more of that outreach piece uh, they definitely encouraged us to continue doing the outreach like things so simple as state of the city when we do the senior expo uh, we have done um, in the past Ron and I did some presentations to groups with Julie and, and others of talking about our, the committee, what our role is, how we would like to collaborate with groups in the community. And um, I mean, my impression, I think Ron's impression was that the more of that in creating awareness, we're going to get, you know, continue to get quality um, applicants to the committee uh, that we're going to be able to do more and we're going to have more impact so it it was a positive meeting very positive um, yeah. very the fact well that we went a half over the time limit there there was some humor and <laughs> a, a couple of other pieces in there that uh, yeah it, it was it was interesting it was a good meeting we walked out feeling very very comfortable very encouraged and with that Jean I think you've got some news too um, yeah I think the I think what's really coming through with all of this is really updating that strategic plan and I think if that is the first thing that gets accomplished it will give you the, the group a good roadmap to go into the future because that is like Judy said it's it's been long past overdue so <laughs> so I think that should be probably the first thing that gets done for the group so oh, mm -mm. Um, <laughs> are there any other questions concerns anything to share what would the process of developing that strategic plan look like for the committee well, first, and it would have to, we'd have to find funding, <laughs> and then uh, they would have a facilitator. And I know that I believe the city's looking at a variety of different departments that need to update their strategic plan as yeah, well. I think that's pretty. Yeah, that's, that's pretty all yeah. over. That needs yeah. to be done. And one of the things with that is um, we had the discussion earlier um, of using some of Mike's students to do a, a strategic plan and we did we discussed that and there was interest in that that it could be done independent of the city plan but would work along the same lines and um, so hopefully we hear something with that soon yes we do we have a strategic planning course and students do a strategic plan in that project so and these are grad students so I think it's a natural fit mm -hmm. Um, so it, that will be uh, a really important piece. When you look at the purpose as it's listed on the website and everything, uh, there are a number of pieces that we've not been able to do because we have no funding. As, as a committee, we have no funding. And with the number of groups that have popped up over the the years since that particular purpose or mission statement was um, done. There have a lot of the provider groups and all of the, uh, the health department, some of the things that are done at the county level, it's replication. And where we see, where, we're, where we feel, a, a number of us uh, in recent years, is definitely the educational and awareness piece um, making sure that we can get people not afraid to go to the ADRC, not afraid of you working with hospice or some of the other. 
you know, people are so afraid of losing their homes, having their uh, being forced into situations that they're not not wanting, not happy with, maybe not appropriate. And so we want to make sure that people that are you know aging get true and appropriate information, not gossip and misinformation. Um, that oversimplifies purpose. I don't think so. <laughs> I think that's good. You want it to be simple. Um, so people understand and are not afraid of asking questions. Um, now, Cynthia, I know you are not shy on asking questions. Mm -hmm. <laughs> However, there are many, and when we do, when like when we did the senior expo, uh, we would have people come up and talk to us about things that they really should talk to ADRC. But because we say, well, the ADRC has got all of these programs, and that you can go and talk. I, I, I don't want to. Okay, we will literally walk them over to a particular program or agency that is at these events and introduce them and help them get the information they're looking for or how to present the, info, the, the question that they're wanting to do. Because sometimes that's all they need. I mean, they can get the information, but they don't know how to ask for it. Um, so that's a big role that we do as individuals as well as committee members. Yeah. I have recently been walking with a friend who's been trying to navigate services through ADRC with um, her mother who needs a lot of services. And it be first of all, I will say that the people who come, because I've sat through three or four sessions, to be the second pair of ears and try to clarify when things are issues are brought up but i i really respect the the calm approach and the people that are there they're they're listening they're never um forcing anything on anybody i think i you know from my professional background and looking i really appreciate the way they do it because people don't ever want to feel pressured they want information and how it's answered. And I know that sometimes it can be difficult for the person looking for help because some things don't happen fast enough, but I think the process is, is very reassuring to people who have to be in that situation. And I did appreciate also the respect for dignity of, every, of that person and their decision-making process. They don't talk down. Right. They, they, they talk to a level of understanding, and they don't, they don't object to having that extra set of ears there. Um, so it's, it's a big thing about the collaboration between agencies or the agency and the family or the programs in the family. And collaboration, is a, collaboration and cooperation are very big and very important. And that's what we're trying to do. So any other comments, questions, or anything? OK. Well, then we'll take a motion to adjourn to our, and our next meeting date will be May 2nd. I'll move that we adjourn. I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Can you put yeah. those up? Thank you.